In this video, we're going to look at how we can create actions that have been triggered by satisfaction metric values. What we're looking at here is a survey that's part of a project. And on this specific survey, we have satisfaction metrics that have been set up. So if we open up the satisfaction metrics area, we can see that we've got four different ones, one for CSAT or customer satisfaction, one for net promoter score. And then we have two different ones that have been set up to track the sentiment of the response as well. Now, if we were to look in the common data service using a model driven power app and we're looking at a customer voice survey response here, we've got information that's been um, pulled through. One of the fields that we can now look at is this satisfaction metric value. And we can see here that what we've got is a series of IDs and we've got then the type of satisfaction metric and then also the value or what it is that the person has responded with. So we can see all of that information here. What we can do then is use Power Automate and set up a flow that will then trigger and allow us to use those values that have been submitted and then do something with it. So if we go ahead and we look at Power Automate and we'll just go through, this is a very simple flow that is going to allow us to get the metric values and then do something with it. So the first step is our trigger. So we basically using the common data service connector and we're using the trigger of when a record is created, updated or deleted. The trigger condition is going to be create. So when the survey response is created and then the entity name is the um, customer voice survey response. So if you search for customer voice, then you'll see all of the customer voice entities that are showing here and we want that survey response. So that's that's essentially our going to be our trigger. The scope is going to be organization. Now, if we set this up and we just use that trigger, it will run for every single survey response for every single survey that we have. So what we can also do is if we click on the ellipsis here, we can go to settings and then in the trigger conditions at the bottom, you can add a trigger condition. And what we're doing is we're basically saying that the MSFP underscore source survey identifier is equal to, and then we basically have the identifier here. Now that identifier is if I am looking up here at the um, survey, then I can grab this form ID. It's also the ID that's used at the end of the URL if you are sharing the survey out with someone directly. So we can use that so that it will only run when a survey response comes through for that specific survey. The next thing we want to do is add in a parse JSON step. So this step right here is allowing us to take the content from the satisfaction metric value field, which is the one that we just looked at in the model driven power app, and we're able to actually add in the schema for that. And then that will allow us to then pull out the type and the values and the IDs if we need to. Now, there's a couple of ways in which you can do this in terms of getting what this schema should look like. The easiest way is basically to have your survey, fill out a survey and then go to the response and then literally just copy this from that satisfaction metric value come back in here, generate from sample, and then just paste it in there and it will format the schema for you like this. So that's all that, all that you would need to do. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to have a condition that we create and we're just going to add in a step. So if I just add in and I just choose the condition control, um, then that's all that I need to do. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be checking that the value is equal to negative and the value is going to be negative, positive or neutral for sentiment, or it's going to be detractor, promoter or passive for net promoter score. So what I want to do is say, I want to make sure that the value is equal to negative. So if I pick value immediately, it will just then create this apply to each. So I don't have to look for apply to each as a step. So I just wanted to show you that. So add your condition, and then pick the value and it will create that apply to each. So let's just get rid of that, go back to what I've already created. And my condition is that the value is equal to negative. So the value, like I said, I'm looking for sentiment that is negative. And then once I have that and I know that the value is definitely equal to, to negative, then I can basically do whatever I want to. So in this, I'm just going to say, well, let's just send an email to somebody. 
But what I could do is I could say if the value is equal to negative, let's get the um, the responses from that specific survey. So the, the actual answers to the questions and I could do something with that. It's entirely up to you at that point. What do you then want to do? So very, very simple. That's just looking for one specific um, metric that's come through. And that's basically saying I want to know if the value is negative. Then I need to notify somebody and tell them. If I then go to a very similar survey, or sorry, a very similar flow that I've set up, I'm doing the same thing. I'm saying when a record has been created, then I'm going to do my past JSON step. And now instead of doing a condition, I can add in a switch control. What this would allow me to do is have notifications for all different types of metrics, but included within the one flow. So I don't have to set up three different flows to check for sentiment or the net promoter score or the CSAT customer satisfaction. So with this one, what I can do is I can say, if I do a, add a switch control and then I'm basically doing it on the type value that's come back through and pulled through, because I've got multiple satisfaction metrics set up, it will basically run for each time that it's found a metric. So I can then say, if the type equals sentiment, and then I can do a condition um, step to say, and the value is equal to negative, then let's send my email notification. Then I can also do one that says, if the um, type equals NPS or net promoter score, and the value is equal to detractor, let's send a notification email. And then finally, I can say, if the type is equal to CSAT, and now what I can do is these values that come through, these are not numbers. So I cannot do um, is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. As far as the flow is concerned, these are, um, this is this is text, it's not actually an integer, it's not a number. I could convert it to integer if I wanted to, but in this I'm just showing you, I can say, um, my condition is that the value is not equal to five or is not equal to four, whatever it is that you want to use as your as your trigger. And then we can say, let's go ahead and send a notification email. So again, this is just a very straightforward way just to show you that once I've then got that value, I can, or, or the type, I can then do something with it and um, either send notifications or update fields on records or whatever it might be that I want to do. Now, the final thing that I want to show you is if we have multiple metrics of the same type. So for example, in this one, I had two different one, uh, di different metrics that were both for the type of sentiment. If I want to have my flow run on a specific one of those sentiments, I then need to use the ID for that to go ahead and actually um, make sure that I'm running it for the correct sentiment uh, for the correct satisfaction metric using the sentiment. So if I look at this flow, again, I've got the same two steps as before. Now what I'm doing is my condition not only has to say, well, the value must equal negative, but I'm also going to have to use an ID and say, and the ID is equal to whatever the ID is. Now, again, there's a couple of different ways in which you can get this ID. The first one is if we are using a model driven power app and we have actually filled out a survey as, as a test and when we get that back, what we're going to see is that this will include the ID in that schema. So we can see there that we've got the ID for the type of CSAT. Um, this is just showing the value for this specific survey response that was submitted. But I can look through and I can say, OK, well, this is the ID for net promoter score and this is the ID for the sentiment one. So I can then use that ID, copy it and then paste it in here. Another way in which I can get this is if I come into my model driven power app, I can click up here to open up advanced find. And then once I open up advanced find, I can say look for customer satisfaction metrics. And I can use the project to basically say, OK, the project equals and I can find the project where my survey is actually tied to. So where have I actually added that survey? And then I can find the correct project, select it and add it. And then what I could also do is I could filter even further and I could say type equals and then I can type in sentiment and then I can go ahead and I can look at the results. I can see, yes, I've got two there. Um, once I then have those results, what I can then do is I can go ahead and export the 
um, records that have come back and that will allow me to download that information into Excel. We can then open up that um, file. And what we're going to find is that once we um, clicked on enable editing, we can see there that it starts at column D, which tells us that we've got some hidden columns. So we can go ahead and we can unhide those columns and column A is always going to be the one that shows us the ID. So we can copy that into our flow to be able to use that as part of the filtering criteria to decide that we're actually then going to do something with it. So a couple of different ways in which you can do that. Another way, if you don't have access to a model driven power app is you can actually use a flow and, and um, have a step in there that will then actually give you the ID. Again, you'll need to go ahead and you'll need to fill out a survey um, one time yourself to actually get a response. Once you've filled out your survey, you can come to your flow and look at your run history, and then you can go ahead and open up one that was successful. The pass JSON step is then going to give you all of the values that it's brought back. So that's the ID, the type, and the actual value that was submitted. And in other words, how was the question responded to? So again, I can see from here, there's the IDs that I need for each of those different um, uh, satisfaction metrics. So I can get the ID from here and I can just copy it and then I can paste it into my other flow where I'm using the ID as a part of that condition filter. So hopefully this video will help um, to, to see the possibilities in terms of setting up your satisfaction metrics onto your surveys and then being able to use the values that are passed through as part of those metrics and then do things like notifications or updating records or creating new records, whatever it might be in terms of your requirement. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that it helps. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.